This is the second video in the series called Validating the Plan. The previous video, as part one, I dealt with identifying the plan, and the plan being, of course, God's salvation plan across the eons, uh, where we had a look more specifically at what the Bible referred, uh, or the references, rather, in the Bible that dealt with identifying the plan, that God had a plan for salvation. In this video, I want to deal with the phases or the progression of the plan. So uh, we're going to have a look at uh, scriptures taken from the Word of God that uh, confirm that God uh, has not just got a beginning and an end of the plan, but uh, that he's filled this plan up with various parts or divisions or phases, however you want to name it, and also that there's a very clear progression towards the end point, towards the goal, uh, which is the salvation of mankind and the restoration of all creation. So uh, let's get into this video and have a look at what the Word says regarding phases and progression in God's plan. Before I get into the biblical plan and the verses that confirm that, I'd like to Come back to my example of building a house. We started that in the previous video where I mentioned about getting an idea, um, getting the end goal again, which is the house uh, according to your, your plans, and then filling up that ending and the beginning with all the details, all the actions to achieve those goals of getting the house built, getting the uh, materials and so forth. Now, uh, in this uh, particular video, I'd like to deal with the uh, uh, progression and also the phases um, involved in a plan. So before we get to the biblical side, um, just consider again building a house, right? When you uh, have all the plans um, in front of you, you cannot just jump the gun and start by building the roof, for instance. Uh, there is a specific sequence in your plan and you cannot jump to a certain sequence until something has been done first. So obviously with a house, you need to lay the foundation first. Once the foundation is laid, you can then start building the walls, uh, laying the plumbing and all that detail. And uh, once that is completed, of course, then you can put the roof on. So you have to have that particular sequence and that determines the progression and the phases of a plan. So uh, with that in mind, um, as practical as it is, let's get into the biblical side and have a look at um, God's plan of salvation and see if we can determine the phases of that plan and the progression of that plan as well. Now, before we get into this verse, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, um, I'd like to just take a moment and have you consider with me when this was written. So uh, Paul is writing to the Ephesians and um, this book was written roughly about 60 AD. It's about 30 years after Jesus' ascension into heaven. Uh, and I'm mentioning this or just bringing this to your attention because uh, I just want you to take note, according to the timeline that we have on the slide, where more or less this book was written, because this is going to uh, play a role with regard to what we're going to mention uh, in this verse uh, and also the phases in God's plan. So if you look at the timeline now, I'm going to indicate with a small arrow more or less where 60 AD is on the timeline. Now, with that arrow in place, um, please note that it is in the mystery period uh, under the body of Christ, also under the grace period uh, of the timeline. And um, since it's in this position, um, I want us to now get back to the phases that is mentioned here in Ephesians chapter 2. All right, let's quickly read this verse uh, just in brief. Uh, it, it starts there with, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. 
Now consider where we are with that arrow. Uh, it is in the mystery period, that green mystery period. Now when Paul says ages to come, that is the period that is going to start when this mystery period in which Paul and, by the way, you and I are in currently. So when this mystery period comes to an end, that introduces the ages to come period. Right now, if you're not sure of it, our period ends um, with the rapture, when we meet the Lord in the air. And uh, it's that little yellow pointing arrow just at the end of the green period there which indicates the rapture and the moment that rapture takes place um, it will initiate the next period of time which becomes or which is the tribulation period there might be a small gap of time before the signing of the covenant by the antichrist but um, we don't know exactly how long that would take but the point is that when the mystery period ends and the rapture occurs, that is the signal for the next period of time or the, or the ages to come to start. Okay, um, it continues the verse in, in verse 11 with the words, Therefore remember that you being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh. Now again, bear in mind, we are in the mystery period. 60 AD, Paul is writing this in this green period. So um, since the green period started with Paul, when he refers to time past, uh, it is the previous section or phase in this plan. And that is, of course, the prophetic uh, period, the law period, or essentially the period of Israel. All right, so this is how you can see that within these few verses, we have a clear indication of the phases or the um, economies, or of course, you can even use the word dispensations, right, um, in God's plan. Uh, if we continue from verse 12 there, it will read that at that time you were without Christ, having no hope and without God in this world, but now... In Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. The but now is Paul's period. Uh, as Paul is writing this, he is in the but now period. And uh, it's interesting to note that you'll find the words but now quite often in Paul's epistles. Uh, because obviously he brings his writings uh, into the current period, which is this mystery period, or the period of grace, or the period of the body of Christ. So uh, there is very clear indication of the phases of God's plan, even by the wording that Paul uses, that in the ages to come, which starts at the end of our current mystery period, uh, time past is the phase that's, that was in operation before the mystery period, uh, the book of Acts, of course, is where the prophecy period um, was put to rest uh, with the blinding of Israel. And Paul was raised up by the Lord, not raised to life, but raised up in uh, apostleship by the Lord uh, and then sent to the Gentiles. Um, and then, of course, Paul writes, but now things have changed. In other words, within the mystery period, where things were this way in the prophetic period or under the law of Israel, but now means it is changed. Uh, there is a new dispensation, there is a new doctrine, there is a new gospel, there is a new set of instructions for us to have a look at. And that, of course, is the mysteries. Right? That's why Paul refers to them as the mysteries. We will have a look at that, of course, in later videos in much more detail. But there we go. That's the phases in God's plan. I'd like to take just a few more moments to expound further on the evidence of these phases. Um, and uh, I'd like to do that by using Romans chapter 5, verse 14 through to 17. There's a few very interesting little uh, pointers in these verses, uh, and they provide you know if you if you look between the lines or if you just study up the verses you can you can do the calculations yourself you know and uh, and see where these uh, 
these phases come from. So uh, just out of interest, let's have a look here at uh, Romans 5 verse 14. It reads, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Um, and that was, of course, the period of time before the law. Um, that is uh, essentially that age of antiquity or um, the, uh, the period of time before Israel came into being. And uh, it's interesting to note also within that period of time before the law is where God made this massive covenant with um, Abraham. And Abraham, of course, was the first or the father of the Jews. Um, but uh, it's interesting to note that uh, in this verse, in Romans 5, 14, it actually gives uh, this uh, designated time from Adam to Moses. Now, the reason for that, this is my opinion, of course, is that when the law came through Moses, uh, that is really where Israel got their identity. Um, even though Abraham was the father of the Jewish nation and through um, Isaac and Jacob and then the 12 sons of Jacob and then the trek into uh, Egypt with, with Joseph, the, the Jews obviously under Egypt uh, initially were in a good position because of Joseph, but um, over time and from uh, because of a new pharaoh that probably came into being, uh, they got further and further into slavery. So it's only when uh, Israel was uh, taken out of Egypt through Moses and um, when they got to Sinai and God gave them the covenant of law, that is, that, that is the covenant that really separated Israel. Um, and made them a nation. You'll see I'm inserting Exodus 19 verse 5, which um, speaks of this particular covenant of law, and uh, where God says, then you shall be, if you obey the law, you shall be a special treasure unto me above all peoples, for the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. This is um, a very important covenant as well that sets up the identity of Israel and also the purpose of Israel that God plans for a future time. Okay, so there's the designation of time from Adam to Moses. In the same Romans chapter 5, specifically in verse 17, but also but in, in verse 18, we see uh, the next designation, which essentially is Christ, Jesus Christ himself. Now, remember, Jesus came to, uh, to bring a new covenant, a covenant that would override the law covenant. So uh, essentially now, uh, again, if you just do the calculations or if you read between the lines, we have this period of time designated in Scripture from Adam to Moses. And then we have a reference to Jesus Christ. Um, and um, obviously, we are dealing now with from Moses to Christ, because Jesus himself was going to come and bring another change, which would then create another uh, period of time or the new covenant. Now, we know that this uh, fell through because of the unbelief of Israel, and therefore God blinded the Jews, closed that program temporarily, and started off the body of Christ or the grace period in which we are currently. So, um, you know, as you as you work yourself through these verses and you do those calculations, you'll end up discovering these periods of time or these dispensations clearly mentioned in Scripture. Um, just with regard to our grace period, there's a scripture. There's many scriptures, but uh, I've just picked out Romans chapter six verse fourteen which reads, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, again, incredibly clear here is, of course, the period before our grace period was the period under law. And um, everything, if you read everything from the Jewish uh, or the Israel perspective, uh, from Abraham literally all the way to Jesus Christ, Remember, Jesus himself said, I haven't come to remove or destroy the law and the prophets. I've come to fulfill them. And uh, we will study this in much more detail as well in further videos. But uh, clearly, under Jesus' ministry on earth, his three-year earthly ministry, he was still proclaiming the law. 
Um, but then Paul over here in our grace period in Romans says that we are not under law, but under grace. So again, it's not a conflict in scripture. This is just simply two different periods of time with two different economies, two different um, sets of instructions. So um, here's further evidence of the phases and more um, proof that um, these phases exist and that uh, there is the progression of God's uh, ultimate salvation plan for us. I had to share this scripture with you um, because it speaks of the exact beginning of the mystery period, um, our period of time. And uh, of course, Paul was the first person uh, to enter in or step into this grace period because of the revelations that Jesus gave him um, and of his apostleship to the Gentiles. Um, so let me just read this verse and expound a little bit on this uh, just to show you that this is basically the beginning of the grace period. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15 and 16, it reads, It is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, this is Paul writing to Timothy, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief, or essentially foremost. But for this reason I obtained mercy, Paul writes, in order that in me first Christ Jesus might show all patience or long suffering as a pattern to those who are going to believe on him for eternal or everlasting life. Now, a very interesting little phrases that he uses here, starting with that one, in me first. Now, this is uh, Paul referring to that he was the first to step into this grace period, that it occurred with him first that Jesus Christ showed all patience or long-suffering in this grace period. And then not just was he first, but also he mentions that the pattern that he sets um, is going to be the same pattern for all those who are going to believe, who are going to believe on Jesus Christ for eternal life. So Paul was the first uh, to step into this grace period, and he was also the pattern for all of us who believe on Jesus Christ uh, as he did initially. Uh, so that is a very interesting verse that just points again to the mystery period and the, almost the exact beginning part of the mystery period. So uh, up until now, we've been having a look at the uh, phases. Uh, we've been studying up some scriptures with regard to the various phases in God's plan. Um, but for this last slide, I'd like to just uh, put a bit of focus on the progressive nature of God's plan as well. And um, just a very simple example by using two scriptures to show you that there is a certain progression. If I can bring you back to the example of the house, of course, we cannot put the roof on before the foundation and the walls have been laid. So uh, there was a definite progression here as well from Israel through to the X period, the fall of Israel, the, ra the, the raising up of the Apostle Paul uh, for the Gentiles, uh, and then, of course, the future dispensations to come. But um, there's a scripture here in Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, which simply reads, The secret things belong to the Lord our God. But those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever. Now, uh, it just points to the fact that God didn't reveal his whole plan all in one go. Um, there was a progressive revealing of God's plan as the phases took place, uh, as one phased out and another phased in, there was a certain progression. Uh, it's not that... Everything was just opened up all in one go. So interestingly, Adam, of course, knew nothing about the great flood that would come with Noah. And in turn, Noah knew nothing about the law period under Moses. Uh, 
Uh, Moses knew nothing about the Beatitudes where Jesus would raise the bar on the law. And Peter, of course, knew nothing about the significance of Jesus' death and the blood that Jesus shed until he learned that from Paul, which is evident in his writings after, uh, after, the, after Paul's, or not after Paul's ministry, but uh, when he learned these things from Paul's writings. So um, there's a very interesting scripture, the secret things belong to the Lord, and that which he reveals to us belongs to us and our children forever. And then the last scripture is just Galatians 4 verse 4. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Um, and this one just reads, But when the fullness of the time had come, in other words, the exact planned moment in time, God sent his son, born of a woman, in other words, born from flesh, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law. Now, uh, just that yellow phrase, the fullness, when the fullness of the time had come. Again, that just tells me that there was specific things and events that had to happen first before God sent his son. And uh, in other words, that sending of Jesus had to happen at an exact specific moment in time simply because of these dispensations or these these economies and the and the and the progression of God's plan, so uh, something to think about. Um, but uh, I think uh, I've put my point across. Uh, I've got the scriptures to 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 prove what I'm saying, and uh, I'll leave this information with you. Um, so see you in the next video.